thanks so much for joining us today on the Sisterhood Coalition for a Talk It Out session. Today we are going to be diving into the topic of the Great Commission and the church outside of the church walls or church without a building. I feel like the pandemic has left a lot of our church buildings empty right now. And that raises the question as to, is the church as a whole really what we think it is? Or is it, has it become a meeting place that we go to every Sunday and have brunch afterwards? I feel like as chaos arises in our country and we start to see violence taking place, we start to question and ask, where is the church? Where are God's people? And so I wanna dive into that a little bit today and talk about this and touch on this. Um, our first question I wanna start with is talking about uh, the early church and how the very first church met in living rooms and met in homes. And Christians were known for love and community and servanthood and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And is that still what the church is all about today? So that's our question. Um, is that what the church is still about or has, has it changed? Have, have we seen a shift? What do you ladies think? Um, I mean, yes and no, I feel like, um, I think those are our values and principles as a church. That is what our vision is. That's mm -hmm. kind of the great commission that Jesus gave us that we try to model our churches after. Um, I think in some ways we've fallen short in the sense of um, community, honestly, um, and serving others despite whether we agree with them or not. Yeah. So I think those are the two areas that as I look at the church that I see a desperate want for. Like Jesus said that we, people will know that we're his disciples by our love. And you know, the Christians that we see on TV, unfortunately, sometimes are just the antithesis of that, you know, holding up their signs and it, it seems to evoke a lot of hate sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Jesus saying like, these people will be drawn to you by your love. Like how is your church loving others? How is your small group loving others? Are they reaching outside the walls of the church or has it just become a little social club? Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously I think like we're, we're getting distracted as Christians by, by a lot of things. So I, I don't know. I feel like the Acts church, you know, that met however, however long ago, they sold what they had to provide for others. It was mm -hmm. all about tight knit group community. They broke bread together. They were a family. And I think that meeting a small group once a week is really great. But are you catching up with those people during the week and, and things like that? I feel like we've kind of, we got the Great Commission. We're going to go out and preach the gospel. But there's also an underlying thing of community and love that I think that the church mm -hmm. um, wants to stand for. But in the past, uh, we probably need to repent and get a little bit more back on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, too, like, relationship is such a key to everything in our lives but yet we miss that mark too with these mega churches and a lot of things like that I feel like that relationship you come and you leave and there's not um there's not there's room to harden your hearts and just mm -hmm. the humility the selfishness just going to we've talked about going to be fed and then not not giving anything back and it was funny, I got this verse recently, um, the Lord showed it to me, you know, it was um, in Acts, and it's better to give than receive. Mm. But I, it was like, okay, well, that's, Paul wrote that. That's, but he said, Jesus said that it's better to give than to receive. But nowhere in the other gospels does it say that Jesus said that. He never said that. It was in, Paul said that, he said that. But in, in the other scriptures, there's no word of that. And so I was like, well, what does that mean, God? Like, what does that really mean? And he was showing me it's how he can say that because I did. And he said it because I lived it. Mm -hmm. You know, he walked that path of better to give than receive. He gave yeah. everything for us, you know. And so 
how we walk and how is more than what we talk. And so, you know, maybe Jesus did say that, but he proved it, you know, like his walk was so strong and powerful that he lived that to the truth. You know, so it is true. I do believe that Jesus said that because he lived it. Mm -hmm. And so I think as a church, that's where it comes down to is have we hardened our hearts to humanity where we are not serving, we are not giving of ourselves, we are stuck in our home and we live for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I've, I'm guilty of it too. You know, so often I'm like, well, I want to spoil my children. I want to do this. I want this. I want that. I want this. And it's like, have I not been given enough? You know, like if we go out our door, we see the hurt and we see the pain and it makes us uncomfortable. If the pain makes us uncomfortable, if the, the things that are real and raw make us uncomfortable, then we are not being the church. Our hearts are not for his people. You know, and that's what we're called to be, the hands and feet. And, you know, so that's my vision of it, too, is that it's a, it's a life that we live, that love. We live that. We don't just say we love people. We live it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like a lot of Christians have, especially like in the larger churches and the mega churches, have fallen victim to that idea of Christianity being showing up to church on Sunday and being spoon fed the gospel mm -hmm. and it ends there. It's like we go to have brunch afterwards, we go home and then we leave Jesus at the door sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the week it's, it's serving ourselves. It's yeah. self-serving. Like you were saying, yeah. um, it's not reaching out for others. It's not caring about others. It's I'm taking care of my needs mm -hmm. cross, you know, crossing off my checklist that I need to do. And then you know, we show up to church as, as being part of a, almost like a, a routine than it is um, a relationship with the Lord. And I feel like that's kind of come to the surface for a lot of people now that the doors of the church have been closed. Yeah. It's like the doors of the church have been closed and all of a sudden like, well, what does that mean for me as a Christian? Does that yeah. mean I take my Christian card and I hang it up until the church doors are open mm -hmm. and then you know people all of a sudden are feeling this disconnect like well where's God where's God right now like mm -hmm. I can't go meet him at the church I can't go worship with everybody at the church so we're you know all of a sudden it feels like God's not there anymore yeah and it's because there wasn't really like a rooted relationship with the Lord to begin with yeah and I think that God uses absolutely everything for good and works everything for good. And I think that this has been a wake up call yeah. to the church. This is yeah. God calling us out saying, mm -hmm. you know, your roots are shallow and mm -hmm. you need to connect with me because like what happens when the government shuts things down and mm -hmm. the church buildings are taken away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our Bibles are taken away mm -hmm. and our freedoms are taken away. Yeah. The first church like understood that because it was a little bit more Roman rule back then. And it was like, are you still meeting together with your church brothers and sisters? Yeah. If you can't meet in a building, then why aren't you meeting in your living room? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I can honestly say that I haven't made an effort to meet with other people in my living room in the absence of church. And yeah. You know, we, we got spoiled in a sense. And it it, it is a wake-up call because, yeah, if that is, God's kind of showing us, if that is that stuff is stripped away, are you still rooted deep enough in me to yeah. hang on to me and to still be the church yeah. outside mm -hmm. of the walls of the church? Can you still love people? Can you still hold on to your faith mm -hmm. when scary, shaky things are happening outside mm -hmm. the doors of your house? Yeah, yeah and in the country like how are you making sure people are fed how are you being sure that people are mm -hmm. are cared for or warm or mentally okay or yeah. you know how are what are you doing mm -hmm. and i think the the, the church just kind of panicked i don't yeah. know like I, I mean i've sent some emails to church and it's kind of like there's like crickets like oh well, we don't know <laughs> We don't know what to do about this stuff going on right now. Go like start, go do your own thing. Yeah. Instead of saying like let's 
link our arms together and let's let's do something about this together. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's easy to become because we have the convenience that we can watch church online mm -hmm. and it's all about our convenience. Mm -hmm. And I think it's made us lazy yeah. and mm -hmm. apathetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there we just sit in our muck instead of digging our heels and say, no, this time is to be set apart for Christ. and I'm going to consecrate it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grow through this time. God is going to honor the time that yeah. I set aside during the week for him. And he's going to cause growth, even though I'm not connected physically with mm -hmm. the body of Christ right now. And I think some of us are taking opportunities of that and mm -hmm. saying, who cares? I'm mm -hmm. the body of Christ. My friends are the body of Christ. We are still have, we still have the great commission. Yeah. We're going to get out and do the right thing. I think God is honoring that and making growth and the roots, like you said, mm -hmm. just take off mm -hmm. and i think the people that have just been sitting there not doing anything um i think they're the ones that are like where's god he feels so absent mm -hmm. i feel like mm -hmm. i'm not growing and they're becoming more apathetic and more lazy yeah. so it's kind of like a catch-22 because at this point i talked to so many people and they're like man i'm more on fire for god than i've mm -hmm. ever been and i'm yeah. hearing god's voice so clearly and i'm making this a priority in my life right now yeah. and then there's people that i talk to that say well it'd, be, it'd sure be nice to go meet with jesus again but he never left. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, this isn't the time where the Ark of the Covenant, his glory left because of his Ark left. Like he is with us. He's yeah. among us. He's within us. Yeah. But he never left. And and realizing that I think is pretty important right now, right now yeah. to keep our growth. And even in Daniel, you know, I've been listening to my pastor preach about him. And he said that. He said, okay, so times got tough for Daniel. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He did what he had always done. Yeah. He did what he had done before. He prayed. He went, yeah. even though they banned it, even though they told him he couldn't pray, you know, or he'd be thrown into the lion's den. Like, no. Instead of that, he prayed. He went and he opened his doors. He did not hide. He opened his doors and he did what he did before. Yeah. So it wasn't like he, okay, I gotta pray now. Like, things are tough. I gotta pray. Like, we've, it's been, he, he just kept doing what he had done before and yeah. he prayed. Even though... He knew the result. He knew what would happen. Mm -hmm. And he, he made a really good comment. My pastor did. He said, Daniel didn't say, oh, well, this must be a sign of God that he wants me to take a break mm -hmm. from praying. Yeah. Or this must mean he, I need to take a break from God. No, yeah. we don't take a break from God. <laughs> no. We don't get a break here. Like, we need him. If that is our source of life. If he is our bread, if he is our daily bread, then how can we survive without him? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not an option to mm -hmm. put him aside, yeah. you know? So it's like, that's where our faith and a lot has to be is to do mm -hmm. what we have done before, which may be something we have never done before, yeah. you know, like go Absolutely. deeper, go deeper, yeah. go deeper instead of hiding. Yeah. In our pajamas watching the sermon and not going out it has it's it's done it to me too i'm like oh this is nice this is lazy this is easy mm -hmm. but yeah who's who's out there that we aren't seeing mm -hmm. who are those broken hearts and and i even thought about like our neighborhoods like i don't know about you but in my neighborhood i didn't feel like i could talk to people when this first happened when all the pandemic started I didn't feel like I could wave at somebody across mm -hmm. the street. It was like we were so closed off mm -hmm. to people. It mm -hmm. like I feel like that it was Satan's goal to hide us from people, mm -hmm. from connecting, from reaching out. Mm -hmm. Because there have been so many divorces, so much abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, all these different things because people stuck in their homes, mm -hmm. and and we're not being the church to to insert ourselves in people's lives yeah we're locking them out yeah mm -hmm. we're hiding our light yeah, yeah. And, and we're hiding even people across the street are hiding themselves right now and mm -hmm. we have to find a way to insert ourselves into all these people's locked doors right you know and yeah. it's like man but it, what we all put on this fake face and everything looks fine and yeah. then you know and then everything blows up it reminds me of a verse saying, like, what good is salt if it loses its saltiness? Mm -hmm. You know, like, we are the salt of the earth, but if we decide to just go inward, we'll lose our saltiness. And, like, what good is that to mm -hmm. be just tossed out? You know, like, we need to still find a way to be effective in this time to still, we are the city on the hill. We are the light of the world. We are the saltiness. Like, we have to find 
like you said, a way that even if I'm home Sunday because my church is shut and I watch the mm -hmm. sermon, okay, well, what am I going to do about that? Will I let God speak to me about that? What is he going to, what are my tools that I can, that I can walk with this week as I go take my kids to gymnastics, as I go, whatever, like there are still opportunities. I think people have just kind of been like, well, we'll just see God when the door is open again. <laughs> For sure. I feel like it's really important to to remember that like what the enemy uses for evil mm -hmm. yeah. that God can absolutely always always use for good mm -hmm. and I feel like again like God is kind of ca is calling his church to do what we've never done before absolutely. Mm -hmm. through all of this yeah. and I think one of the big things that's highlighted here is just the power of prayer mm -hmm. even like I the more Christians I've talked to, the more I keep hearing from people that are like, oh, like I just really felt like this spirit telling me like I needed to pray for this or this person or pray for our country. And, and it's just, it's something that we need to act on and be obedient on because like there is so much power in prayer. Mm -hmm. I know that like when I really sit and think about it, I'm like how often do I sit and pray for our country? And I think our country needs prayer now more than ever. Yeah and praying for the hearts of people to turn back towards the Lord. And God is, God is working right now yeah. and he's doing something right now. And mm -hmm. most importantly, we are not to be silent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he said, it's like the enemy meant to, to lock us up in our homes mm -hmm. and to keep our, to silence us. But there are still ways where we can put our voices out there mm -hmm. with technology and everything yeah. else. And I just, I, I feel like God is also calling his people to speak now more than ever, like stop being silent. Like it's, it's not right for us to know the truth and to yeah. not share that with people that are perishing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I really feel like God is going to use this and he's, he's creating a huge movement right now. Like it's, we don't always see that what's happening on the surface, but what underneath, mm -hmm. like there's so there's much a really big undercurrent happening there right is. now. Yes. I just watched uh, Francis Chan. He did a video from, he's living in Hong Kong right now. And he talks about how it's been so bad there and how the church is sort of persecuted anyway, and how they anticipate their church doors won't open again. And he talks about like church you can either take this to mean this is horrible and devastating and it's all over or God is going to take us to new heights mm -hmm. and we are going to have influence yes. like we've never had before. Yeah. And your neighbor is now your ministry and your person across the street is now your ministry and, and kind of raising yeah. up a new yeah. church that can maybe never meet in a building again. Yeah. And we've been so catered to mm -hmm. as Americans because we have our rights and we have our freedoms and we have our this and we have our that that we can kind of depend on. So we're not really persecuted and hey, someone might say something mean about us, but you know, we're not really in that bad a position. Look at China. They are persecuted yeah. to the point of death. Many of them have been imprisoned many times and there's not a stronger church in the world right now. The persecuted church is the most effective church and maybe we're up for some persecution right now. Yeah. And maybe this is a chance for the church to say, all right, we're going to start being effective. We're not going to let this crush us. Yeah. You know, in, in Matthew, I just took the screenshot, you know, it says that, um, I want to read it directly. Sorry, give me just a second. So this is Matthew 16, 18. And this is Jesus talking to Peter. And I tell you that you are Peter on this rock. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Your government cannot shut down the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Look at China. Yeah, like, absolutely. This is not something about government control. This is God moved and nothing can stop a move of God. Yeah. Nothing can stop the body of Christ. Same. Darkness yeah. cannot overcome light. We have to, mm -hmm. we have to share this with our brothers and sisters in Christ because I think we're just missing it and saying, well, Christianity was fun. Yeah. Yeah. This is a life source. This is something that's unstoppable. Yeah. Life we line. need to get, we need to get behind it as the church. Yeah, absolutely. That brings me to our next question too. Like, just getting behind that. How can we help people experience God like never before during a season where meeting inside the walls of a church just isn't going to happen? I think like what she just said right there and just even re like reaching your neighbor. I feel like <laughs> all of this has actually forced me to talk to my neighbor right next to us 
that I've, I've never really taken much time to talk to her because there's a language barrier. And the more I talk to her, the more I realize that she actually understands a lot more than I think and how I've been able to love on her by like meeting some needs that she's had. And I didn't even realize she had needs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Ugh, it just like broke my heart because it's like, I've lived in this house for like eight years now, I think almost nine. And I haven't even taken the time to really get past an uncomfortable, you know, exchange mm -hmm. to really see that like, there's a need there. Yeah. And like, how can I meet like the needs of my neighbors? Like if we're not loving our neighbors, then like, what are we doing yeah. here? You know? And so I know that like, again, God uses everything for good and yeah, yeah maybe like this is taking our, our faith, our, you know, whole label of church to another level where we are like, your ministry is now to talk to your neighbor. Yeah. Like, imagine that. That's like what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And yet, like, we've we've gotten so, I don't know, timid. Yeah. I would say, like, yeah. so. I When I first bought my house, my, my first house, I felt like so, like, like a spirit of bondage. Like, I felt bound in a way. And I was like. I was like, I can't just get up and move. I can't just go and do like maybe what God's calling me to next, you know? And I was like, wow, that's a really weird feeling. Like, why would I feel like that home would be a bondage for me? But like, I see it now, especially like I was saying, like with my neighbors and different things, like it's a way where we can hide and where we don't have to go out and encourage and be what you've said, you know? And But I think for me, that's something that I... I want to, he, he shared with me that, um, so often I want others or the moment to speak life into me and I need to start speaking yeah. life into that moment. Absolutely. Right. So I need to start encouraging yeah. and loving on people and telling them they look beautiful and telling them, mm -hmm. like, even if it's just like something so minor that it's mm -hmm. not even the word of God necessarily, yeah. but it is light it is because light. it's something mm -hmm. that they have not heard before or in a while. They haven't t been told that they matter or they mean something to somebody, you right. know, or exactly. whatever it is. Like even at the grocery store, being yeah. so grateful for what they're doing and, and how hard you're working and how, you know, just, just being able to acknowledge somebody mm -hmm. is so powerful. And, you know, so I really see that, that is our place here right now is it might not be to cram things down people's throat and no. hold picket signs and do these things, but it is to walk in love. Like you're saying, and just say, just speak. Like we are too quiet. We are too mm -hmm. silent. And, um, it's time to say something, even mm -hmm. if it's just encouragement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In, um, the book of Acts, it's in the second chapter, they're talking about, you know, they're kind of painting the picture of what the, the first church looked like. And they did worship together in the synagogue, but they met in houses and then they always broke bread together and they ate dinner. And, and there's something so powerful about just eating with other people. And like, how often are we just even extending an invite to yeah. dinner? Because yeah. We're like, too busy. We're too, we're too busy. Or I might have to clean my house. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like me, I'm like, oh, I don't want to clean my house. Yeah. But, but yes, just like even being hospitable and mm -hmm. opening our homes to friends or to yeah. people we know are unbelievers and, mm -hmm. and just being that light and yeah. how like, it's almost unusual anymore. How often are people even inviting us? Like, come over, oh, and, have, come over and have dinner. Especially now. Yeah. It doesn't happen. No. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen. And no. it starts with us. Like like you said, it starts with us. Like we're always looking yeah. for somebody to invite me mm -hmm. to dinner or it, you know, pour into me when like it's actually we're called to do the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. So And I think another thing that kind of goes into that, just speaking to your question, is how can we get people to experience God like never before in this time of shutdown and isolation and fear of just getting together with other people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I have to, a couple weeks ago, I was reminded like, this is not a battle against other 
men and humans. This is a spiritual battle going on. And Christ says, I give authority to you. And then the, the Holy Spirit will come and he'll give you power. Right? Yeah. So we have authority through Christ who yeah. left it with us. And the Holy Spirit gives us power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are we using our authority and our power to come together to speak into people's lives that don't even know we're speaking into their life. We don't have to go up to them and be like, listen, the Lord told me this about you. And da, da, da. I haven't had many of those conversations that I could feel like, but God told me you need to pray for this person and you need, and here's the spirit that's hanging on them, the spirit of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So I prayed, broke it off of their house, off of them, off of their family. And I said, Lord, right now I need you to come and make your presence known in that house because it hasn't been known because there's been the spirit over their house. Mm -hmm. They have no idea who they are. They have no idea. I've even prayed for them. But God said, I have the authority to yeah. speak into the spirit realm and to break that off of them and then to offer them peace and Christ in that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to come out of that, but I'm being obedient. Absolutely. And I think that those are the situations where they don't even know. Mm -hmm. But we need to be awoken to the, the voice that says, go to the right. Follow me here. Yeah. Do this. The, sh the sheep will hear my voice, he says. Mm -hmm. Listen to the voice. What is he telling you to do? Yeah. You know, and it, it is saying a kind word to the person at the grocery store. And it is mm -hmm. saying, God bless you. And it is doing something extra kind that's out of your way. It is checking in with that friend that you know is having a hard time getting pregnant. It's all of those things. But it's also a spiritual thing that that's, that unbelievers are not aware of or they don't want to be aware of that we can actually get into there and do warfare for them yeah. and be an intercessor for them. And that yeah. is going to change their life whether they realize it or not. Like prayer never returns void, ever, ever. Mm -hmm. And especially when Jesus is telling you, giving you a name mm -hmm. and giving you the spirit, you know, you know God's going to make something out of this. Absolutely. Yeah. The power of prayer is just, like you said, it's walking in our authority and walking in our power. And that is so important to like realize. I think a lot of times we like, we say a prayer and we're like, mm -hmm. how far did that go? Did it really like, did it really do anything? And mm -hmm. the scriptures tell us absolutely there's so much power, and especially in the name of Jesus and, mm -hmm. and breaking bondages off of people and, and just taking the time to, to just listen to, to really listen yeah. and not being so busy, but listening and being tuned into what the spirit is telling you. I think that's, that's super, super powerful and a really great way that we can, um, love on people yeah. right now. Um, I wanted to touch on one final question here and then we'll wrap things up. So there are people that have felt like they've lost their connection to God. So what are some major ways to reconnect with God if you feel like you have lost your relationship with the Lord in the absence of church services? And I think a big part of this is look, is seeking God's presence in everything, in absolutely everything. Because I promise you, like if you look for God mm -hmm. in your day to day, like he will show show himself to you, whether that is like you know, somebody in the car in front of you bought you coffee <laughs> or something in the coffee drive line, or like, I don't know, you got your favorite table at your favorite restaurant or something like God just like does little things like that to just show us that he's there or show us something in nature sometimes that's yeah. just incredible or beautiful or a phenomenon like that. Like it's, mm -hmm it's so apparent that he's there if we look for him. But if you're not looking for him, it's also really easy to miss him. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so super easy to miss him mm -hmm. and just to kind of brush it off and be like, Oh, that was nice. And yeah, we look distracted and move on yeah. with your day. But I think, yeah. you know, looking for God and everything and in the details of the day is a really a great place to start. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling for a while with that too. I am. Um... I found First Thessalonians 5.16, and it was just like, he specifically said, this is the will of God for you. And so I was like, okay, that's what <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing every day. Mm -hmm. And it's rejoice always, pray continuously, mm -hmm. give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I see that so often, you know, when I'm struggling, rejoice always. I'll put on music, you know, to put me in the right mindset or to give me some truth in that moment that I can't seem to hear anywhere else or pray continually. There's the prayer, you know, like 
Sometimes they're desperate. Sometimes they're just like, I don't see you. I don't feel you right now, but I know you're here because you said you are. Yeah. So, and give thanks in all circumstances. So often I will use the scripture and I'll be like, okay, um, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So I imagine myself, I'm giving him thanks and I'm singing to him and I'm thanking him. And I'm like, I'm going into your presence right now. And I am with you. You said I am. So I am. So I'm entering into your gates. And here I am. And then, and then in his presence is fullness of joy. And so I'm in your presence. So yeah. I have fullness of joy right here, right now. Like mm -hmm. I am full. I'm complete. I'm lacking nothing. You know, yeah. like. And so those, that's like so powerful, you know. Mm -hmm. Rejoice. Pray. Yes. And spend that time. The time is the peace, though, that we forget to give. Yeah. Well, and a huge piece of this too is when we're praying, we're talking to God, but God, you heard from God when you were in his word. Exactly. When we're reading in his word and we're in his word, he's talking to us. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, you're feeling like you're not hearing from God. Well, are you good in God's word? Yeah. Like dive into his word because sometimes mm -hmm. we like to talk, 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 <laughs> and we're not getting anything back because we're not diving into the word where we can yeah. hear him talking yeah. back it's to like us. a conversation it is like i speak you speak i speak you speak i speak mm -hmm. you speak but if we don't open that word he can't mm -hmm. speak back yeah yeah i'll be honest a couple of days ago i missed my so i take my quiet time during my girls naps and naps went bad one day and then the next day i don't know i got distracted like i do and so it's been a couple of days since i had that nap time about an hour to just you know do my centering prayer and listen and just, you know, soak in the love and do all the, my stuff. And it was a couple of days and the next day I was just so cranky. And I was just like, man, I need to, I really need to get back to the Lord. So I started, you know, with my music on and whatever. And it was just like crazy. It was like, he knew that I hadn't heard from him in a couple of days. And he was just like downloading all this stuff into my brain. Like he wouldn't stop talking to me. Like he's being so chatty. And I was just like, okay, okay, okay. Like I couldn't relax. I was just like hearing from him and hearing from him. He was like, write it down, write it down, write it down, put it in your journal. And it was just like, okay. And then at the end I repented. I'm like, I'm sorry that you had to just pour all of this into me in one hour because I haven't been spending continuous time with you. Yeah. Like he was, he was determined that he was going to tell me what I needed to know during that time, because that's all the time I'd given him. And he yeah. did not show up. He did not get mad at me and say, well, you haven't seen him. I'm not going to show up for you. Like he was so, he's so faithful, even though we're unfaithful, you yeah. know? Yeah. And anyway, I think that just like spending that time, that's just huge for me. I can tell the difference when I'm just not in, engaged with, with him fully. Yeah. You, know, you just feel dry. You feel worn out. You feel drained. You have nothing yeah. to give anyone. You turn kind of inward and become very selfish. And Whew. I don't That's how I am. Yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Mom, you're yeah. preaching to you. Yeah, you're yes. good. Well, in Psalms 32, I got this the other day too. It, <clears throat> it was... um. Um, okay. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. He already forgave our sin. Mm -hmm. He's forgiving the guilt that we have for our sin. So often mm -hmm. I feel at least like I feel the guilt of my sin and yes, he's forgiven me of my sins, but he has already done that fully and completely and I right. should ask for it. But the guilt of my mm -hmm. sin, you know, that's what I carry day in and day out. And I'll be like, beat myself up, beat myself up because I screwed up again. I screwed up again. But it's like he has confessed over me that he has, he will forgive the guilt even of my sin. Mm -hmm. And he'll take it all away. And so I don't have to hold that. And then it's like, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. And then he goes personal. I will instruct you and teach you in yeah. ways that you should go. I will counsel mm -hmm. you with my loving yes. eye on you. Um, don't That's be right. like the horse and the mule. Don't be stubborn. Don't, mm -hmm. don't be hard hearted and you have to be controlled. Like come mm -hmm. to me willingly, mm -hmm. come to me yes. with like a willing full heart, you know, don't make me come and force you to come to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and he says, rejoice in the Lord again and be glad you righteous seeing all you who are upright in heart. Yeah. And that's Psalms 32. And it's like, yeah, it's like, he has promised us more than we could even imagine in the faithfulness he gives yeah absolutely yeah. i think too coming back to this one more time you know we talked about how people are saying ah 
yeah, we're Gargo, ah, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I don't think we should beat those people up and no. I don't think we have no. them, but I know um, someone that we've been bringing to church with us is a new believer and not really engaging with, you know, the church that he's been coming to regularly has been very hard. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a new Christian, you don't have the tools, yeah. you know, and even if you're watching online, you know, it's just like you, you, I don't know. He feels like he's just not there. He's missing something, you know? So I feel like saying what we're individually doing during this time, um, to keep in the word and keep yeah. in God's presence and being aware and yeah. rejoicing. And, and you know, yeah. I think all of those things are tools that like, if you're missing out on yeah. feeling connected with God and feeling like he's gone, it's, he has not moved anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times it's because we have moved. Yes. Mm -hmm. So come back you know, and, and re-engage, um, in the different ways that, that we've talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, ladies. This was awesome. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you found this encouraging. If you would like to weigh in on anything we've been talking about, you'd like to comment, please feel free to use that comment box. And as always, please like, and subscribe so that you can stay updated on any uh, new videos that we put out. As always, we are praying for you. We love you. God bless.